Good morning. It is Saturday, 8.01 a.m. I'm a black man. You know how black people, we, we always late. We don't never do shit on time. All right. I'm getting ready to start my recording for Anchor. We are doing Anchor. We're doing a podcast. Today is Saturday, April the 18th, 2020. This is part of my video documentary about race and racism in America. This is going to cover the media, mainstream media partnership with the corruption and the racism in America, at least in the instances in which I have personally experienced. Now, racism don't work without black cooperation, all right? That's mainstream media, that's secondary media, that's street media. Starbucks and Shorty, don't forget that story. Because I've been doing this at Starbucks for the last 10 years. You can ask Doc Toons, you can ask Mayor Stephanie Rawlins Blake, you can ask Sheila Dixon, you can ask what, um, Warren Brown. Got a lot of politicians that like Starbucks because they bougie ass black people. I like Starbucks because the coffee's strong and that's where I can catch y'all ass at. Y'all like being seen. That's where you congregate. Black people like 7-Eleven. Get it and go, you know? We're not going to lose focus today. We're going to talk about mainstream media and the role that they play in misinformation. We're going to talk about Hassan Giordano. We're going to talk about Richard Scher. We're going to talk about Jane Miller. We're going to talk about Barry Sims. We're going to talk about Mike Shu, Mike Helgram. We're going to talk about Stephen Janice. We're going to talk about the voices that give the community an opportunity to be heard. But we're going to talk about how they manipulate the conversation. Mainstream media has a moral and ethical obligation to tell the truth. They're not supposed to be. In Maryland and in Chicago, Chicago Tribune, Chicago Sun Times, Chicago New Sun, Baltimore Sun, WJZ, WBAL, Baltimore Brew. Y'all are politically orientated. And most of y'all go with the Democratic Party. In any area where there's a high density of black people, New York, Chicago, Baltimore, it's run by Democrats. And them Democrats is paid off or paying into the, the political machine. They, the part of their political machine is the media. All right. If you look at Alec, the corporation and the 13th Amendment, their, their main driver was the media because that's how you control the narrative and put stories out. Mainstream media been knowing me since 1997. I smoke weed. Been locked up for weed. It's my medication. I turned in guns and drugs to the police at the police station in 1986. In 1997, Richard Sher did the first story on me. Google it. Hard look. Richard Sher, Kai Jackson. Mary Mubala. Don't forget them names because I ain't forgot about it. Y'all held me on this plateau, you know? When y'all was holding me on this plateau, y'all was, I was, I told y'all when I started this, I'm, I'm an ex-felon and I work for ex-felons. I told y'all that on that hard look story. If we don't speak up for ex-felons, who gonna speak up for them? And I've been speaking up for them ever since. Now, I don't know what Hassan Giordano been doing. In 1986, I don't know what Hassan Giordano was doing in 1997, but I know what Hassan Giordano is doing now. He's protecting the upper class of the Democratic Party. He those bougie black people. When Martin Luther King got locked up, he wrote letters from a Birmingham jail. When I was locked up, I gave you a jailhouse diary. It's of a letter. And if you look at portraits of a letter on YouTube, it deals with Richard Sher. It deals with Mike Shu. It deals with Governor Hogan. No, I'm sorry. Governor O'Malley. Governor Hogan wasn't in the picture then. It deals with Governor O'Malley. It deals with Kamenetz. It deals with Schellenberger. It deals with Greg Bernstein. And it talks about the media and the role the media plays in misinformation. Now, I done caught <clears throat> Richard Sher did the first story. I'm in a hard look. It was about an hour long, but you only got like 10 minutes. Then WJZ did another story on me in 2011. Adam May. 
Now, Matt, Adam, May, Adam May lied to y'all. Adam May tried to paint me out to be this crazed black man when I was at the Spring Grove Medical Facility. Adam May don't work here no more. Because when I got out of Spring Grove Medical Facility and I got out of jail and I beat that case, I started beating up the media. Adam May ain't here no more. Dakari Turner ain't in here no more. You got a lot of a lot of people that have moved on from Baltimore because I didn't make them comfortable doing their work here. Y'all participated in locking me up, so I'm going to participate in chasing you out and putting you out of business. It's a fair exchange. Ain't no stick up without a gun. You use the camera, I'm going to use the camera. Richard Sherr did the first story on me on Hard Look. 1980, no, 1997. That's when I opened my store on Falls Road. My store was a social scientific experiment because I was an ex-felon. You want ex-felons to change their change they lifestyle, so I did that. I was a role model, and I was role modeling in my community. I was my mentor, and I'm a mentor in my community. A lot of people that work for me got jobs. You got this white boy named B. Personal Chef and Catering. He on YouTube. He does Personal Chef and Catering. He charged $100 plates. I changed my product. I ain't changed my hustle. I used to sell nickel bags, dimes, nickels, quarters, cocaine, all that shit. I don't sell that shit no more. I sell sandwiches. I sell sandwiches. Not sandwiches. Sandwiches. I'm not real well defined. I'm just hood rich. I'd rather have a million friends than a million dollars. Because I'm a millionaire with a million friends. I'm like Robin Hood in the hood. And I'm good wherever I go. I'm the Big Daddy on Wheels. That's the community grill that you see and that you eat off of. And just like I said, Richard Sheriff did the first story on me. I've been feeding everybody in Baltimore. I feed Cal Ripken. I feed Ozzie Newsom. I feed Jonathan Ogden. I fed Yonder. I fed Ted Marcia Broder. I fed the Orioles, the Ravens. I fed judges, lawyers, and politicians. I fed Governor Schaefer came out to my stand. Governor Ehrlich and his wife used to come out there, and I did a party for Governor Ehrlich. I worked for the Republicans and the Democratic Party because I'm about that money. I'm the middleman. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. All I care about is your money because you don't care about me being Democrat or Republican. You just care about my vote. Now, Hassan Giordano been knowing me for a while, and this ain't personal, bro. This is strictly business. Don't never take anything I say personal. This is strictly business. You got a, a moral, moral and ethical obligation too, bro. You're supposed to be the voice for the black community. You DMV News. Dog, you ain't DMV News, dog. You're just working for them upper, uppity-ass niggas. Now, Stefan Walker, you know me, so you know how I come. I come hard, and I go after your people that you work for, but I'm still cool with you. It ain't never personal. And if you take this shit personal, something wrong with you. This business. I never took this shit personal when y'all locked me up. I knew the consequences of my actions when I went against the white man. I'm lucky that I'm still alive and breathing. I could be dead. You killed Martin. You killed Malcolm. You killed Fred Hilton. You killed Megger Evans. You killed black voices that speak out against white supremacy and white power. But just like Malcolm, just like Martin, just like... Man, Frederick Douglass, I'm a black abolitionist in 2020. Now, my paperwork is in, in order. Like, motherfuckers say your paperwork. My paperwork in order. And you go get to my paperwork from the Department of Justice and the FBI. Go to the real people, not the real news. Go to the real people. Now, I gave this shit to the real news when real news opened up. Handed it to Paul J. It was Mar Maryland's prison industry. Because the real news came here with this sunny side attitude talking about they're gonna tell the real truth well y'all some real liars and that's some real shit now when i see steven janice i shut that shit down and his girlfriend hurt her feelings dog like i said this ain't personal this business put your feelings in your pockets to keep it moving i've lost 2.6 million dollars I lost another $130 million in videos, movies, and all that other shit. I'm getting ready to make a comeback. And I'm getting ready to put my product on the front desk. The state of Maryland participated in this fraud. Like I said, Richard Shear did the first story of me, a hard look. I own shorties. All parts of shorties. My kids work for me. 
I divorced, I, I fired my wife. You feel me? Because this is business. Only thing that white people respect is money. That's the only thing that white people respect is money. Damn, my anchor went off. My anchor went off, so we're just going to do this like this. I'm going to do another episode. I'm going to keep going like this, and we do the episodes. If it'll let me. This is new to me. I'm trying to do two two medias at once. I don't have a, a, a engineer. I'm playing the man of many hats. I'm playing the engineer, the director, the producer. If I ain't killing careers. I'm killing careers. When I put that toilet out and I shit on you, that's a career killer. Because see, a joke ain't never funny with you to blunder the joke. Y'all made a joke out of me when I got locked up. Oh, it's funny as a motherfucker. Oh, shorty crazy. Oh, shorty this. Y'all was running jokes, talking about for the Taliban. This, the, I'm this, I'm that. But dog, when I got out of jail, y'all got quiet as a church mouse. And Jesus was not as a church mouse you shit your draws and i'm not biggie smalls now y'all have y'all's little campaign forms and y'all have y'all little meetings and shit when i get my shit down packed with your little zoom shit i'm gonna zoom in on y'all and i'm gonna say everything i gotta say y'all had these virtual meetings and these virtuals dog i'm gonna be virtually in your mind i'm gonna be like the matrix dial them seven numbers and i'm gonna be right there 831 1188. Late. Mainstream media. The sign Giordano been knowing about this since Frank Conway's prodigy. I filed a $54 million lawsuit and Frank Conway destroyed that shit. Now, everything that I'm saying is on court record. I filed a, a complaint against the clerk's office because y'all destroyed a lot of shit that I filed. You destroyed the shit that I filed with uh for Judge Bell, for Judge Pearson, for Judge Holland. And uh Sharon Galloway is my witness. Also Valerie Cunningham. She ran for mayor and running for mayor. Valerie Cunningham was there when uh I came into Frank Conway's office. Then she was there when I was, she was working for Senator Van Holland. Now she's running for mayor. And she'll verify everything I'm telling you. My son Philip Davis was there because I took him everywhere I went. So we wouldn't have no he say, she say, nothing. 2020, I'm going to pull your card. TJ Smith got a deck of cards. It's got my mama name on it. And I'm not going to show you. When you see me, show some respect. Don't speak to me. When I holler mic check, I'm going to holler your name like, the, like Lookout Mountain. In Stone, Stone Mountain, Georgia, you're going to hear me across the lands. Because like I said, I don't need a million people to march. I need a million people to pay attention. They paying attention. This coronavirus is creating a, a audience in which participates in what I'm talking about. Richard Share, Mike Shue, Mike Helgram, Barry Sims, more Brew. Is really, really, really shielding this corruption. Because I gave this shit to Fern Shen in 2011. Fern Shen did the story at the Baltimore Brew. If you go to the Baltimore Brew in two, on February 10th or February the 8th, 2011, Fern Shen had a story that she wrote all about me. Wrote all about me. All that locked me up for that toilet. You didn't lock me up for the bed post basilica where I was showing how Governor O'Malley had a relationship with the Catholic Church and how y'all was on that prison industry and shit and money laundering through the Catholic Church. Dog, I'm going to pull y'all's card on that shit. <clears throat> money count itself. Should have gave me my money and shouldn't have been fucking with me. Should have left me alone. Never kick a sleeping dog and never bite the hand that feeds you. I bite back. You used your media to paint a picture of me. Said I was a, a terrorist. You said I was mentally deranged. You called me narcissistic. You used some $15 words on a $2 nigga. Tricks on all. 
<laughs> I use a $2 trick on y'all. I'm country dumb, but I'm city slick, and all I got to do is know how to work this shit. This ain't nothing new to me because racism been around since I've been on this earth. I'm going to use your Bible stories, and I'm going to use Mark Twain. I'm a Huckle Huckleberry Finn you, and you're going to be my Huckleberry friend. We're going to put the fence up, and we're going to let you paint the, the color. You feel me? Because anything I say about you, all you got to do is call me a liar. Tell me I'm lying. That's all you got to do. Say I'm lying. Call me out my name. Say fuck you. Say something. Stop acting like a little bitch with your mouth and with your quiet ass mouth. Straight up. I can cuss on Facebook too. <clears throat> Mark Zuckerberg. You're going to have to get all my Facebook posts since I started this. And we're going to show you that I've never changed. I've been the same shorty. When I first started on Facebook, I used to cuss like a sailor. Because I am. It was on YouTube. Man, I cuss like something crazy. Because I can. When they say cussing, using those four-letter words and, and, and being verbally abusive is, is good for you. It's, it, it, it don't hold shit out. It don't hold shit back. And I don't like holding shit back. I like shit getting shit off my chest. In our community, that's how we talk. We use motherfucker a lot. We use nigga a lot. We lose bitch a lot. We use hoe a lot. We cuss a lot. That's just what we do. So if you're around me, get used to it. If not, walk away. Turn the channel. Flip the switch. Because I ain't got no gun to nobody's head. I got the camera in your face. We're going to focus on mainstream media today. Richard Sher, Hassan Giordano. The voices in the community need to be heard. If y'all in the community and y'all giving one side of the story, y'all got to get both sides. Don't go in the, in the community looking motherfuckers saying the dumbest ass things. Go in the community, put the camera in the face that somebody got something to say that means something. Don't keep pushing this scenario about locking niggas up and not addressing the war on drugs. We traded the penitentiary for the plantation cotton for cocaine and we the cash crop. And all you care about is locking us up. Since I lost my anchor, <clears throat> and I'm doing society same, that's my backup plan. You always got to have a plan B. All right, anchor, bop out, then you go with Facebook. Facebook has billions and billions of people. Like I said, I ain't as dumb as the average bear, boo-boo. I got 21 pages on Facebook because y'all was shutting my pages down and, and locking me out. So I opened up like 21 pages, so we played... 21, we playing blackjack. You gambling with my life, so I got to gamble with you. I gambled that you couldn't shut all my pages down, and you didn't. And you can't. I got 5,000 friends, and I got 100. I got 5,000 friends, and I got 1,500 followers. So I got a cast. You know what I'm saying? I don't need a million people to march. I need a million people to pay attention. When those 6,000 people, it's the underground. Those friends are in Australia. They're in Jerusalem. They're in Africa. They're in China. They're in Japan. They're in Russia. They international, bro. I ain't got to distribute this movie here in, in, in America. I'm looking for international distribution because there's more money in the world than there is in America. Rap music went over to Africa 10 years late and they still wearing Adidas. So if I put this shit over in Africa now, they're going to wear shorties. You feel me? Product merchandising, marketing. If you look at the first story in Hard Look and Richard Share, he will tell you. I told y'all what I was about when I was on there. Communications, marketing, and distribution. That's part of my resume. Yeah. I'm self-taught. I've been in the streets since I was 14. I sold potato chips. I sold now and laters. I sold them in all flavors. I sold hot dogs, hamburgers, steak and chicken, old style Millers and Strohs, shots of Hennessy, Crown Royals and Seagram's Gin. Dog, I used to get it in. I sell barbecue now. Shorty's bootleg barbecue. So good it's illegal. And his meat tastes good in your mouth. And everybody swallow. Yeah, I'm nasty with this shit because I'm good at what I do. Assigned you down, let's take a walk down memory lane. 
Richard Sherrill, let's take a walk down memory lane. Jane Miller, let's take a walk down memory lane. Governor O'Malley, let's take a walk. Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake, Sheila Dixon, let's take a walk down memory lane. Cause see, I like funny shit. And it was funny when I got locked up. Dumb man, toilet out in the streets, just running around talking shit. But I'm going to tell you some real shit. Google the movie The Jerk. In the movie The Jerk, Steve Martin had a dog in a toilet. That's all he had was a dog in a toilet. And that's all I use against you white people is a dog in a toilet. I use a stuffed animal. The dog's name is Whitey. And I kick Whitey ass. Every time I get mad, I put my foot in Whitey ass. Yeah. I'm abusive to my pets. Because I'll care about pets more than you do care about people. And it's a stuffed animal, so I can do whatever the fuck I want to it. Figure that one the fuck out. I even got locked up for doing that shit. I put the toilet on North Avenue, and I tied the dog to the toilet, and y'all tried to lock me the fuck up. That was some funny-ass shit. Then I put the dog in front of the Baltimore Sun, and I tied it to the toilet in front of the Baltimore Sun, and y'all came out the building. Y'all came out the fucking building and had a fit. I was laughing my ass off because I was across the street. I gave you 30 feet, and I videotaped that shit. Because all I got to do is put the dog out, and it creates conversation. Because human nature is, is curiosity. Like Curious George. The man in the yellow hat don't live here no more. All right? Now, I put that toilet out in public spaces because it created conversation. I put the toilet out uh, in front of the federal courthouse. I put three toilets out there. For the I put the court I put the toilet out in front of the federal courthouse. You can Google this shit. Google C D Witherspoon meltdown. Google it. I put the toilet in front of the courthouse. That motherfucker lost his mind. He picked the toilet up. He kicked the toilet. The police sat right there and watched all that shit. He was doing traffic, man, double parking, got out the car two, three times. This was straight on Pratt Avenue in front of the federal courthouse. And all I did is put the toilet out and videotaped and told the nigga where the toilet was at. He came down and seen that toilet and got pissed the fuck off. And that's what I'm going to do to you. I'm not going to put my hands on you. I can't shoot you. I can't beat you. Like I said, this ain't personal. I'm going to shit on you. We're going to turn sugar to shit and shit to sugar. And I'm going to have fun doing it. The same way that you did me. Same thing make you laugh, going to make you cry. Like I said, this ain't personal. This is strictly business. That's my anchor account. It went out. All right. That's Eddie Griffith. Now, I don't met Eddie Griffith. I can't say met him. I met his brother. Tried to talk to him. But uh, this is from the Rio when he was at the Rio. That's when y'all had that shooting in Las Vegas. And I've been going to Vegas forever. All right. I told Eddie, Eddie about this. I'm trying to sell this. So Eddie's a artist. He's got a so, art and activism. And I make some funny ass shit, Eddie. I make some good ribs, too. This is when y'all locked me up. And it clearly states, this is to prove I was making a movie about racism in the judicial system. That's Notary Public. That's Notarized. July 2012. And that's when y'all locked me up. Come over to emotion. Richard shared. Mike Shu. Because, see, ooh, we. Kai Jackson. Vic Carter, WJZ, y'all was running so many stories on me when I was locked up. Y'all was painting a picture of me being this terrorist, and y'all was trying to taint the jury pool. Because y'all ran a story on me three, four, five times a day about me in that motherfucking toilet. Well, I ain't locked up no more. I don't hear nobody talking about the toilet. I don't hear nobody talking about reparations or compensating me for my losses. I don't hear none of y'all talking nothing. Y'all quiet as a church mouse. Because, see, when y'all do your live feeds, now, I interrupt your live feeds. And y'all ain't got no law against that. Ask Fox 45. That was, like I said, part of my letter. Portraits of a letter was about the media. So I'm picking up where I left off. I'm going to start shutting y'all down. No, I'm going to continue to shut you down. I've been giving y'all a break. And I gave y'all information. Jay Miller has my Department of Justice ID form. So does Fox 45. So does WBAL. All right, all of y'all got this, but none of y'all talking about it. Y'all locking up Mayor Pugh, you locked up Cheryl Glenn, and you locked up Nathaniel Oates, but you ain't did shit about Marilyn Mosby.
You ain't did shit about Nick Mosby. You ain't did nothing about Governor O'Malley. You ain't did nothing about Scott Schellenberger. You ain't trying to send white people to jail and you keep giving us breadcrumbs with these black people. Pratt committed crimes too. Because if you look at Pratt's pockets, she was over there with uh, Pew. They got a thing in Chicago called Operation Grey Lord. Look it up. Baltimore Sun need to look it up because it was in the Chicago Sun. A federal investigation just like that. You take that Operation Grey Lord and you bring it to Baltimore and I can shake out the money just like they shook it out. Because see, Mayor Pugh, Jack Young, Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake, the Baltimore City Council, um, the Greater Baltimore Committee, and Public Works, Y'all work together in collaboration to stealing money from the citizens of Baltimore, dog. I'm a cater. I've been in y'all's houses. When Pat Arrakis was expanding his empire, y'all gave Pat Arrakis a lot of breaks. Pat Arrakis traded property for, for man. Ask Pat Arrakis about me. Ask Peter Angelos about me. When I was locked up in Baltimore County Detention Center, I asked Peter Angelos to file a class action lawsuit. I'm going to ask Peter Angelos to file another class action lawsuit. Because I told y'all about the treatment of inmates long before this coronavirus came through. Marilyn Mosby trying to say that she care about the inmates? No, she don't. Marilyn Mosby had this shit since 2014. Yeah, when Marilyn Mosby first ran for office in 2014. Marilyn Mosby, Nick Mosby, Brian Frosch, John Cardins, Brian Vaith, Tessa, president of NAACP, we, David Wiggins. We was all in the same room. Yeah, we was all in the same room. Hassan Giordano, you was in there too. And I was talking about sending people to jail, not just the black people. I was talking about sending Governor Hogan, to, Governor O'Malley to jail the same way that he sent Governor Blagojevich to jail. I was talking about sending Governor O'Malley and his mom machine to jail. But Governor O'Malley created a strong mom machine because he got a lot of black people to kiss his ass. When Governor, no, when Lieutenant Governor... Brown ran for office. I shut that shit down. I came up in y'all's campaigns. I was putting toilets out there. Y'all called the police on me. Told the police, kiss my ass. Put the toilet out there. You couldn't do shit to me. Because, see, I know how to read and write. Like Frederick Douglass. I'm an abolitionist. And for Frederick Douglass to be a successful abolitionist, he had to know how to read and write. Because, see, dumb niggas couldn't make it across the border. He had to know how to read and write and write his papers and sign people's signatures. He had to know about petitions. All right. I know about petitions. I know about constitution. So my constitutional right of freedom of assembly, dog, I put that shit in your face and you hate how that tastes. See, a toilet don't care if you're black, white, straight, or gay. A toilet take your shit every day. And the house ain't never home without one. So I came into your home. So every time that you see a toilet, you think about me. It's like the Stockholm Syndrome. You're going to identify with your captors. I'm not going to identify with my captors. I'm going to make my captors identify with me. Flip mode ain't a record label. It's my lifestyle. Now, every time the Governor Hogan see a toilet, he think about me. Every time Richard Sher see a toilet, he think about me. Every time Hassan Giordano think about a toilet, go think about C.D. Witherspoon and how I made his toilet. Because I'm going to start making toilets for all of y'all. It's going to be like... All right, I gave T.J. Smith a deck of cards. That deck of cards is from my mama in Las Vegas. I had 13 decks. I got two of them left, so I gave out 11 decks of cards. T.J. Smith got one of them. Governor Hogan got one of them. The first game that y'all played when y'all was kids and learned how to play cards was 52 pickup. And y'all going to 52 pick up your careers. That's the game we're going to play in 2020. Now, I'm using these social media outlets as therapy because I can't afford no doctors. So I smoke my weed, drink my coffee, and I run my mouth. But the shit that I come out my mouth with is going to hurt a lot of people's careers. My end game is a class action lawsuit. And with this coronavirus going on and the in and, and, and Marilyn Mosby not doing her job, I'm asking to access the grand jury to file on behalf of the inmates in Maryland. A class action lawsuit. And when I get this shit together and get it written, I'm going to send it to the inmates. Nicole Mundo going to help me do it. If she like, Yeah, Nicole Mundo and me work with Out for Justice. 
job opportunity job opportunity to job opportunity cat task force with Karen York. All right, I work with them, and they work with Marilyn Mosby, and they're trying to get inmates out. Need to get them inmates tested before they go out. Need to set up some facilities inside the facilities to make sure that they're ready to come back home. And then you mean to make sure that they got a place to go. Because a lot of inmates is going into homelessness. And that's something that you need to address. Now, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, Hassan Giadano, I told y'all about this cor coronavirus and how it was going to affect the prison industry. And you asked me if I wanted a cookie. I don't want a cookie. I want change. I want y'all to start paying attention to the prison industry that I've been telling you about since I got here. I'm a prisoner's right advocate. N62528, State Illinois versus Dwayne Davis. Google that shit. I'm also with Amnesty International. Amnesty International, envisioning safer communities, town hall, regional conference speaker. See the little black dude right there? The one with the scarf on his neck and the dreads and the big forehead? That's me. I got that big forehead and that crooked smile. And my name is Dwayne. Don't nobody really know my name, but you can do that shit now. I don't care. It's Dwayne Shorty Davis, a Baltimore activist. He has been involved in issues including corruption in the judicial system, police brutality, politicians' transparency, and the prison military industrial complex. Dog, I've been doing this shit since 1986. That's Amnesty International. That's 2014. So how much work you think I've been putting in? Now, I don't know how long the DMV news been in effect, but I know that in 2014, the real news came into existence and I gave it everything that I gave Amnesty International, I gave it to the real news. Steven Janis got it. Paul Jay got it. And y'all threw that shit in the garbage. Now y'all want to say it's y'all leaders for the, for the community and y'all giving a real voice. No, y'all not. Y'all exploiting black tragedies and black in the, y'all exploiting black tragedies, period. You claiming to care about us while you get paid off our tragedies and you ain't putting none of that money back in the community. I don't see the real news coming, feeding no homeless. I don't see the real, real news with no programs in the community. I don't see WJZ with no plans, and no, no, nothing in the community. But y'all say y'all the community. Fox community, Fox says they Fox 45, the voice for the community. What fucking programs does Fox 45 have in the community? Y'all don't got shit in the community but exploiting the community. Check out my investment in the community. I feed the homeless, been feeding the homeless. I do books and barbecue. I do dinner and a movie. My investment in the community is not paralleled by any individual organization in Baltimore. And I ain't from around here. I have no vested interest in Baltimore, but I live here. I eat here. So I make that shit happen here. I've been homeless since 2011. I don't have no financial, no, no money. Because that's where that, I'd rather have a million friends than a million dollar shit come in. Because my friends been taking care of me for the last 13 years or the last 10 years. You feel me? They've been taking care of me because I've been taking care of them. And we take care of each other. That's what community works. That's how it works. Now, if anybody got a problem with anything I say, pull my card. Because I'm getting ready to pull 52 of y'all's cards. 52. Go to Ray Lewis right now. Go to Ray Lewis and say my name. Say Shorty. Then go to Ray Lewis and ask him about that meeting we had up in his restaurant. We had a movie. We had a we had a meeting with GDs. G's up, baby. I'm off the south side of Waukegan. I run with the Kingsmans. I run with Val King and her family. And I ain't no. I'm not gang related. I want you call a commissure, a concierge. I'm a concierge because I be able to work with the GDs, the vice lords. I work with any gangs because all gangs want to do is get money. And I got money with the best of them. Now I'm going to get money with the rest of them. You feel me? Never try to pimp a pimp. Never try to play a player. And you can't never out hustle a hustler. Dog, I'm all three. That's why I'm going to use toilets to do what I do. It's like the trilogy. Like I said, I can read and I can write. I'm in the law books. So let's continue this journey. This fantastic story. I'm going to give you some parliament fidelic. Make my funk the P-Funk. I want my funk uncut. I want the raw. I want, I want that funk uncut. 
That's Judge Bennett. Judge Bennett oversaw the case against the gun task force. So I turned y'all's ass into Judge Bennett. Like I said, racketeering and fraud. I turned Schellenberger in, all of y'all. But see, if y'all lock Schellenberger up, y'all got to reverse and remand over 10,000 cases. And Governor Hogan got it. Bobby Zirkin got it. Chairman Valario got it. Now, Delegate Stephanie Smith has it. Let me get this shit right. I want to say this to your face. Y'all look at my face when I say this. Uh, Delegate Stephanie Smith. Baltimore delegation. She got this. Vanessa Atterbury. She got this. Clippinger got this. They don't want to investigate the prison industry because that's your cash cow. The state of Maryland makes $500 million a year they make off of prisoners. Labor. That's free labor. $500 million and the inmates don't even get 5% of that back in their pocket. That's slavery. You talk about China and Nike, fuck it. Look at Maryland and slavery. Under the 13th Amendment, you're incarcerated. When you're incarcerated, you got to work for the state. You got to do whatever the state do. Dog, when I was incarcerated and worked for the state, I worked in the commissary. When I was incarcerated and worked for the state, I had an outside pass. And you know why I got an outside pass? Why I worked in the commissary? Because I can read and I can write and I can do arithmetic. Most niggas is functionally illiterate. They can't read and write because they dropped out of school. But when they dropped out of school, they stopped learning. When I dropped out of school, I went to higher education. I went to Ghettoology 101. I learned how to multiply. I learned how to make packs. I learned how to make keys and kilos. Learn how low can you go. Pimping ain't just with pussy. All right, and y'all got that shit fucked up. A pimp ain't just with pussy because you can pimp politicians. And that's what I did. When I came here, I played country dumb. I had to learn y'all's I had to learn y'all's game plan. I had to learn who's who and who do what. And when I learned who's who and who do what, I set my game down. And I put mine to work. So, like I say, let's continue this story. I met uh, Karen York and Nicole Mundo in Annapolis. I met Christopher Williams in Annapolis. If you go to my Facebook page, I put that video up. Sharon Galloway was with me. It was called Puppet Law. All right? It was called Puppet Law. Sharon Galloway and Shorty. And Speaker of the House Miller. All right? Christopher Williams, remember that day? Told y'all I was making a documentary about the prison industry. It's still ongoing. As long as you have a prison industry, I got a job. As long as you got racism, I got a job. As long as you got corruption, I got a job. Because I'm a champion for justice. I'm Shorty. Tawanda Jones nicknamed me Shut Him Down Shorty because I shut shit down. All you got to do is tell me what you want. I canvassed it and then I shut it down. I shut City Hall down. I shut events down. Ask Hassan Giordano. I shut his shit down. His last live feed before the coronavirus came through was at the Arena Players Playhouse. And I wasn't playing. I walked in the room, hollered my check. Kelly Davis said she wanted to shut it down. Me, PFK Boom, to want, uh, me, PFK Boom, shut it down. I came in there and hollered my check and gave the floor to Kelly and the rest of them. The art of protest. Proactive protesting. Gonna do the same shit when we get this coronavirus under, under wraps. I don't need a million people to march. Dog, when I come in the room, I shut shit down. So when y'all had your town halls, when y'all had y'all's votings, when y'all had this, I'm going to shit on you and shut you down. I don't need an army. I'm going to be like 300. I'm going to be like 300. And I'm a part of 300 gangsters. Ass boom. I'm a concierge. All right? I'm a concierge. That means I give advice. And I advise you to pay attention. See you tomorrow. No, I ain't even going to do that tomorrow. I ain't finished with y'all yet. Let's do this. This is the Maryland Black Legislative Caucus. All right. See that? 13 is my lucky number. March 13, 2009. 1402 Lochner. Dog, y'all kidnapped me from my home because I was making a movie about your Democratic Party and the money y'all make. Now, y'all seen me give you the pictures up the other day. I gave the, the faces. See that? Vice Chair, Senator Pugh, Chair, Delegate Veronica, T yeah, all of y'all knew about this. Chaplain, 
Emmett Burns. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, y'all know me. We going way back. We going so far back. Nathaniel Oates. Look at the members. Cheryl Puller. Frank Turner. How many of y'all here and gone? See what y'all did. What y'all did in the last elections, the last two elections, y'all had to replace them crooked ass motherfuckers in, 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 in Annapolis. Y'all got to get young blood in there. So Nick Mosby's the, 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 the main one. Nick Mosby and Marilyn Mosby. Marilyn Mosby and Nick Mosby, I compare you to Jesse Jackson Jr. and his wife. Because both of y'all is just as, just as dirty as they is. You feel me? Straight up dirty. That's why I shut y'all shit down when y'all had y'all's little event at the Arena Players. Nick Mosby, that's why you on my on my on my Periscope page watching my videos, Nick. Remember the song Sometimes I Feel Like Somebody's Watching Me? Well, guess what? I know who watching me. Cause when you watch my Periscope, I can see who watched my Periscope. Nick Mosby watched my Periscope. Eddie Griffith watched my Periscope. Straight up. Eddie Miff Griffith been watching my Periscope for the last 90 days. Because like I said, I was administrative assistant to the engineering officer. I worked for the Board of Elections. I know how to track shit. When you sell drugs, you know how to track your product. I'm my product. My videos are my product. So I got to know where they're going. I got to know who's seeing it. I got to know who it likes. I got to know my audience. I got to know what it appeals to. So I got to pick my demographics. Okay? I done gave you the Maryland Black Caucus. I done gave you Hassan Giordano. I done gave you Stephen Janice. I done gave you the real news because it's some real shit. Move over 2020 because when we hit the streets, me and PFK boom coming hard. I'm getting ready to do this art and activism. The Maryland Art Council has programs and shit like that. The state of Maryland has the, the state of Maryland's art industry is $2.7 billion. And ain't a lot of people eating off that plate. I'm going to eat off that plate in 2020. Art and activism. Cheryl, Cheryl Middleton. Councilman Middleton. Councilman Leon Pinkett. Councilman Costello. I need to know about them tax breaks that y'all giving for the movie industry. Because I got a movie that I need to get made. And y'all got my money. I'm getting ready to file papers work with the board of estimates about my money. Because like I said, I was a Baltimore City resident. You kidnapped me for making a movie about Baltimore City politics. You're going to pay me one way or the other. Like I said, my shit international. I'm turning down friends. I got over a thousand people that want to be my friends. So if you want to delete yourself, you are more than fucking welcome. Because I don't need you. Let welfare feed you. Mic check.